Okay, so what I want to do real quick is just do a real quick video going over the concept of logical equivalency. It's a very basic concept, but it's actually just super critical to the entire foundation of everything else in the rest of the course, whether that be transitioning from propositional logic to Boolean algebra, dealing with simplification and transformation of expressions, uh, dealing with proofs, just a bunch of different things. So even though it's very, very basic, and this is going to be a very short video, it is actually very critical. So let's just go ahead and hop on over and take a look at it. So this logical equivalency, go ahead and take a look. So what is it? Compound propositions are said to be logically equivalent. Whoops, that looks terrible. If they have identical truth value yields. So specifically the yields part here indicates that the results of the different expressions need to have identical values. So let's take a look here. We have a variable p, inputs are true and false since they're just one. It's gonna be two of the one, gives us two different possibilities. And we have two different expressions here. We have negated p, and we have p implies negated p. So we plug in true here, we negate that, we get false. We plug in false, we get true. So we have false, true here. Now for p implies negated p, we're going to have true implies true, no, oh, I'm sorry, true implies false. Uh, that's gonna be false. And then we have false implies true, which is going to be true. That gives us false true. So both of these are gonna be false true, therefore negated p is logically equivalent, indicated by this triple equal sign, to p implies negative p. Now one thing you might notice is we can use this as a form of simplification. So if we have p implies negated p, an expression, we know that we can just omit the p implies part because the negated p by itself is equivalent to p implies negated p. So this would be a form of simplification based on logical equivalency. So that's one really good use case of it. Moving on, we have two very specific types of logical equivalency. One is a tautology and another is a contradiction. So they're very similar, but they are polar opposites of each other. So tautology is going to be a proposition that only yields true values, whereas a contradiction is a proposition that only yields false values. So looking at this tautology here, we have single variable p, true and false. No matter what we do, what we plug in here, we are going to get a true yield. Same thing over here with the contradiction, we have p, with p conjoined negated p, no matter what we plug in here, we're going to get false. So this would be tautology, contradiction. Not too bad. They're very important when it comes to specific types of quantifiers and proofs. Those are things we'll discuss in later videos. But for now, tautology always yields true. Contradiction always yields false. Here, this is going to be a more complex truth table here, but what we're looking at are three unique expressions. So each one has the same three variables, P, Q, and R. So we have two to the three, which is eight possibilities. So you have all of these listed here. Now let's take a look at these results. If you look at here, we have true, false, true, false, true, 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 false. True, false, true, 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 false. And then true, false, true, false, true, 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 false. Now, I'm not gonna go through solving each one of these one by one. That's why all the answers here, because remember, the only thing we care about are the yields, so their results. If we look at them, they're all very, very similar. There's one specific instance right here where this differs from the other two. So this one is not logically equivalent. However, this and this, these yields are the same. So that means that this and this is logically equivalent to each other. So P negated, negate, oh, P disjoint negated Q implies R is logically equivalent to negated R implies negated P conjoined with Q. So just at a look here, we'd be able to tell that we could interchange these two in any expression, no problem. Now, 
this is more of a uh, just a look at what it requires to be logical equivalent because this one while it's very very similar the moment you have a single inconsistency it is just out the window you could have a million results like a million different combinations and all of them are the same but one that singular one throws the entire thing out so just keep that in mind moving on why do we care about this well it's very very helpful for a lot of reasons two specific reasons are I mean, transformation and simplification so looking here we have the overall expression of p disjoined with r conjoined with the gated p disjoined with q and that should be logically equivalent to p disjoined r conjoined with p implies q so we can transform this into this and the reason we want to do that this has one two operations in it whereas this one just has one so it is more efficient to compute this expression than the other one so it'd be simplified now on the bottom part here we have negated t conjoined with r implies negated s disjoined with t that is logically equivalent to the negation of negated t conjoined with r disjoined with negated s disjoined with t now this one is a little bit more abstract in why we would do this because it is creating more operations so it is more complex we're actually adding on a negation operation so we have kind of the opposite would do up here however this removes our conditional statement and maybe we have a boolean system maybe in hardware that only has negation operations, disjunction, and conjunctions in the form of and, ors, and nots, and we don't have any way to deal with the conditional statement. So if we transform it from this more propositional logic expression to something similar to a strictly Boolean algebra expression, then this could be passed into that system, computed, and handled just fine. So we don't have to create logic and hardware to deal with conditional statements, we can just transform our expression into a form that it can process. So that would be the actual transformation process and why you would want to do something like this. And then here, if you're curious on how we knew how to do those specific types on the previous slide, there's a bunch of laws. We have dependent laws, associative, commutative, distributive, identity, domination, double negation, complement, De Morgan's absorption, and then conditional identities. There are more. This is just a curated list that I have, um, pretty good, but there's a few standout ones. De Morgan's is definitely a standout one. You're going to see that a lot. Anything in mathematics, anything in a lot of computer science stuff and computer engineering stuff will utilize the concept of De Morgan's. If not directly, then it's very critical for the foundation and structure of it, and we'll touch more on that towards chapter 5. But for now, just know that De Morgan's Law is very important, and you will definitely see it a few times in the future. Now, the ones that stick out to me as being pretty important, distributive, the identity domination laws are pretty important, along with the complement laws. Double negation is kind of important. It's more tangentially important in terms of being able to transform, say, you have two negations, you can simplify that to P, or if you need to transform P into double negation, to get to another step to use one of these other laws, you can do that too. We'll, we'll do that towards the end of the, this lecture, but these are the ones that stick out to me as being pretty important. Not that they're all, not that any of them are unimportant. We've already seen the conditional identity applied in the previous slide, but I know that these specific ones here are pretty important. And like I said, De Morgan's is a standout one. So De Morgan's law are logical equivalencies that show how to correctly distribute a negation operation inside a parenthesized expression. So here we have negated p disjoined q is logical equivalent to negated p conjoined negated q. And kind of the same thing down here except for instead of disjoined we have conjoined and vice versa here. So what's happening is we have this negation operation on the outside of the parentheses. We apply it to both individual variables and then our disjunction becomes a conjunction or in this case our conjunction becomes disjunction. So let's say I have negated q disjoined with p. That would be logical equivalent to negated q 
conjoined and the gain P. So something like this. But it may not be very apparent why this is important, but let's say we have a system that has negation and uh, multiplication or conjunction here and we want to create disjunction well let's do this this would be logical equivalent to saying uh, P disjoint with Q okay so this specific transformation here is incredibly important and we'll touch on why it's so important in chapter 5 but for now this right here is incredibly important for computer science and computer engineering but more on that later so we have two examples here or at least this slide and the next slide will be two examples of how to use propositional logic laws and stuff like that in terms of simplification and proofs so in this case we want to do a proof of p implies q is logical equivalent to negated q implies negated p so we start here with what's on the left side so just our starting point so we apply the conditional identity to just kind of swap things around well actually no no no, no that's a sorry that's a commutative law <laughs> this is actually transforming the conditional operation into disjunction and applying a negation to our first variable so kind of this part gets transformed into this all right so looking at that the community of law actually is the part that switches things around and usually this isn't very important but setting up for this next conditional identity and transforming this p and q and swapping them around to q and p that is where it's very important in this example so we just end up with q disjoined with the gate P. Not a big deal. Now in this case we want to take the Q and we want to double negate it. We actually want to apply the two negations in front of it because that sets us up similar to the very beginning with a negated Q with a disjunction which gives us the form of negated Q implies negated P which is exactly what we want and that was terrible. So this and this are identical so we ended up exactly where we wanted to be so yes this does overall prove it based on the concepts of logical equivalency and we know that every time we apply one of these laws the result is logically equivalent to the original now in this case this is probably the most straightforward and genuine benefit to logical equivalency and propositional laws because it is taking this very complex expression over here and simplifying it just to this basic operation. So you go from, let's see, one, two, three, four, five operations on the left hand side to a singular operation on the right hand side. So let's take a look. We just start with our starting point and we want to apply De Morgan's law to this left hand side. Oh, distribute our negation operation to both of these and flip our expression. Then we want to distribute out this negated P right here and have the leftover negated Q disjoin with Q. Well, we know that this, uh, we're gonna do the commutative law first. This is kind of the silly commutative law. You can honestly skip this step for the next one, but it just gives us a form of Q disjoining with negated Q, which we can apply the complement law and give us true. So this gives us negated P conjoined with true, which based on the identity law, is just negated P. So it's just a single negation operation in a variable, not five different operations on two variables, but they're going to give us the same result no matter what. So that's kind of the overall gist of how logical equivalence works, why we care about it, and kind of setting up for where it's used in the future, specifically on that De Morgan's Law aspect. But with tautology and contradiction, those are very, very useful for predicate logic and for proofs later on. So, hopefully you learned something. I'll see you guys in the next video.